This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew, the discreet online service that delivers tablets with the same ingredients as Cialis and Viagra, all for a fraction of the cost. Go to bluechew.com and use code HOLLY to get the first month for free, only pay $5 in shipping. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so excited to bring you one of your favorite guests, one of my top rated episodes, the one and only, the legendary Julia Ann. Hi. I can't. You can't? I can't. You can't? You you do know, though, that your interview got like, I think it's like like 2 million views on my YouTube channel. Like people love it. Just because it's been up a long time. Well, there's been a lot of episodes that have been up a long time that haven't hit that mark. Like, you do know how much people love you, right? No. <laughs> you don't I'm know. I am not. I am a pain in the ass. I'm I mean, a, we know that. I'm a I pill. Know <laughs> I'm difficult. I'm loud. I'm sarcastic. I'm, I'm a lot of things. You know what, though? You know what I like about you? You're a straight shooter, which I actually appreciate. And I know not everybody likes to hear like the raw, uncensored version of one's thoughts, but I appreciate that. I like knowing where I stand with somebody, even if they don't like me. I'd rather know they don't like me than pretend to like me. And like, I told you I don't like you. No. You did. did, (laughs) If you didn't like me, it would be you who told me that. I clearly am here. And if I didn't like you, that's how you would know. You'd be like, hey, will you come do my podcast? I'd be like, hey, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't want to be mean, but no. But no. I mean, no. I don't feel that you're mean. I feel that you're just straight. And, you know, I think that you're honest and straight up with people without being, you're not unkind about it. No, no. If, like if I didn't, I I usually think I have a pretty real reason. It's not usually just like somebody has to have done something to me, mm-hmm. like done something to me, like actively, like mm-hmm. done something to me or actively done something to somebody in my circle. Yeah, you know. And and then I'll say it. You know, I'm I don't appreciate this, so I, that's why we're not friends. Like. Have you always been that way or have you become more comfortable with, you know, no. being yourself and stating your boundaries as you've gotten older? I don't think I'm very good at stating my boundaries. Mm. I think I'm good in, in the respect that I end up stating my boundaries, but I don't think I'm good at stating my boundaries. Mm. I think, and this is what I said, I'm a pill and I'm loud and so I'll get frazzled and realize I have to state my boundaries and I'll be like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not like, listen, we need to talk. Like, yeah. no, I'm just like, why would you want to make me do that? You know, the, clearly that's just saying that's not something I want to do. But I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I spaz a little yeah. bit, you know? Okay. I, I'm more likely to like get upset and cry. Mm. And then it'll be like, oh, clearly that was her boundary. <laughs> and she's a little bit um, possibly unstable. So, <laughs> Do you consider yourself like an emotional person? I am emotional. I'm really emotional. Um, I was actually talking about that on the phone with somebody because they started to cry. And I was like, you know what? I'm the first person. Like, I will cry. If you make me talk in public about anything that has any sort of mm to it, I'm done. Like, I cannot. If you gave me a speech that was sappy at all, I would never make it through it. (laughs) Never make it. I'd be like, in the the (laughs) <laughs> wait <laughs> how are you at movies um it depends it depends i you know what i'm i'm sappy if the dog gets hurt if the dog dies like what yeah. is that like, well is it necessary so these are the things that'll mess me up um we do have resources for that you know about does the dog die.com right <laughs> you don't okay 
this is this is a, a wonderful resource. There's a website. These it's called Does the Dog Die dot com, and it's actually it started off as a website where you could go and check out to see yeah. movies like if the dog dies, right? Because right? I'm the same way. Like if the dog dies or is hurt in the movie, like I can't. Like I'm mm-hmm. done. I remember my husband tried to get me watch to watch House of Cards, mm-hmm. the American version that Kevin Spacey was in. The yeah. first fucking scene, the very first scene, he snaps the dog's neck, and I was like. I'm I'm d- in the first scene. I'm like, like I'm done. I'm, I'm not watching this. this. Like what the fuck? Yeah. So it's a website where you can go and so it initially started you could right. find out in it's movies. It's just dogs though, right? Now it's like a trigger site. So now it's like everything. It's like okay. are there spiders in it? Is there smoking? Is there drug use? Like anything that could possibly trigger you, they have there and you can check out yeah. movies that and then you can Cause prepare what was yourself. That? The, it wasn't King Kong. There's a new, there was another one that came out something like Little Joe or <laughs> little, I don't know. It, it was, wasn't King Kong. It wasn't it was King little Kong, Joe. but it was something. It was a different one, and it was called like Little Joe. Or I'm looking. I'm looking to him for help. He's like, girl, I don't know. Anyway, I was. I was asked. Mighty. Mighty Joe. Is it gorilla? Yeah. yeah it Mighty. Mighty Joe Young. Okay. So. See, he does know. Yeah. Ernie did know. Help me. So in any <laughs> case, I was like, oh, uh, they were like, oh, we're gonna go see this movie. I was like, I, I don't want to see this movie. It was Julian. A male performer. Oh, back in the, hot yeah. Julian. Yeah, Julian. Oh, we were dating Mr. At the time. Big Dick Julian. And I was like, I do not want to go to this. And he was like, No, come on, we're gonna go. And I was like, I do not want to go to this though, because inevitably something is gonna die. And he's like, What makes you think that? I go because in order for these movies to do anything, they have to kill something in the beginning. I don't know why it's necessary, but that's what they do. They mess with you. That they break you down to try to build you back up. And um, he was like, No, no, no. I swear. We went there in the first five minutes of this movie. There's gorillas screaming for their lives, babies being taken, the mother gets murdered, and I am no longer watching the screen. I am staring at the side of his face like I'm I'm lighting him on fire <laughs> with my eyes. And he was just like, yeah. Yeah, feeling that right. <laughs> this is true. Honestly, any movie like, about animals has some kind of like animal. You don't have to break me down to like, build me up. It, it just yeah. Because Life I has guess done this. You need like the arc of the story. But I don't need I, to come I hear you. to the movies for it. But that's why I can't. Like I won't watch like Marley and Me, um, Turner and Hooch. Like, I have never seen Old Yeller. Any? I've oh, never seen. Are it. you kidding me? Nope. I've never seen the movie, but I've I read the book Cujo. and I was hysterical. I never seen. I saw no. where the red fern grows, and that was no. the end. That, tr- that that book traumatized me as a kid. No. Flicka? No. 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 Um, and then there was Thunderhead, son of Flicka? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with these people? Yeah. It's this is unnecessary. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's pretty awful. You know you all saw The Day After Tomorrow, and they were like, that dog can't come in that library. And I was like, yeah, that dog's going in that library with everybody else because the blizzard's coming, my friend, and we are not tying that dog up outside. <laughs> You're like, that dog's not coming in the library. Shut your hole. I'll put you outside. Oh, my God. Anyways, doesadogdie.com. Okay. Great resource. Now you can know. You, you'll never be surprised by a dog dying in the beginning That's ever good. again. That's good. That's good to know. Um, so to, like, completely change trajectories <laughs> – uh, we haven't spoken since the world changed because the pandemic came around. Yeah. How, and I know that that's changed life. I think we saw life. each other once for a birthday party. Maybe. Right. But yeah. meaning I haven't like interviewed you, oh, no. like sat you down and drilled you about you what's in your brain. Your socks off. How has, how did the pandemic change things for you? And, or did it at all? Mm. Even if it's just like work related. I, well, I think in that respect, I could say that it did, it created uh, online platforms to be much more powerful. And I think that that changed everybody's lives. Yeah. You know, I mean, certainly ch- changed a lot of people's lives and it definitely did some things with mine. And, and so that obviously was, was fascinating to watch people go there. But, you know, when it first started, um, I do have friends that are a little doomsday. So they're like, clouds right little clouds of doom 
and uh, I adore them, but they'll be like, oh, you know, this is bad. This is bad because everybody's, you know, people aren't going to be working. They're going to lose their money and then it's going to be beside, you know, between, you know, I got to pay my rent or I'm going to you know, do adult content. There's no way people are going to buy adult content. And I'm just like, and I looked at him like, well, do you not? No history. I mean, no. the realities are is that people are no longer going to be able going to the movies. They're no longer going to be going out to dinner. They're no longer going to the park. They're not doing anything right now. Like the only thing they can do is observe entertainment. Like mm-hmm. that's it. I can't, oh no, you'll see. Okay. Yeah. I feel like there's another level layer to right. that though. You were right. I was but right. I think what what COVID really showed us was not just that obviously that people were going to be consuming adult content more, but the opportunity that platforms like OnlyFans provided to connect directly Mm -hmm. with your favorite performer. I think that is what changed because I think we saw how hungry people were to have like a real connection with people, which platforms like only fans provided right. and that's why they did so well well because like myself like i always had my own website and mm-hmm. i had it since i was like 28 yeah right so uh i already kind of had a direct line but i think what happened here is that social it was almost like a social media platform and a website had a baby mm-hmm. so now you've yeah. got instant social media gratification mixed in with more personalized uh content you yeah. know um where before you know you had your website but you know you still only updated it like this and you went on once a week and you were it wasn't a direct text or a direct uh a direct message or a dm or whatever it is like that didn't really exist yeah. uh so they it was still a slower roll mm-hmm. but right now it's like they have a faster role. Like, so it's more immediate gratification needs the personalized website. So. Yeah. Yeah. Did it change your perspective in terms of just like life in general? Cause I know, the I mean, pandemic. the pandemic. Yeah. For me, I mean, I think it really, it put the pause button on work and it made me also to be fair. I also had a kid during that, which also completely <sighs> changes your life perspective, but what a time to have a kid too. It was a perfect time to have a kid. Cause I didn't have to work during my I, pregnancy. I it was get great. that. But at the same time, I would have been like, what is this COVID thing? Yeah. And are, is my, am I, is my baby in danger? Am I gonna be able to go to a hospital? I mean, yeah. what's happening yeah. at the beginning? It was yeah. definitely scary. Luckily when, by the time I gave birth, um, things were a little bit better and they allowed my husband into the, right. um, delivery room because of just a few months before that, like in April, they weren't allowing the spouse Terrifying. in the delivery room. Can you imagine having a baby by yourself? Well, there, um, no, cause our generation <laughs> wouldn't have done that, Yeah, <laughs> but all the yeah. ones before us would be like, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, yes they were having cigars. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> in the fair. waiting room because to you be could fair. smoke in the hospital. Fair point. <laughs> My dad drank gin while I was born. There you go. But he was there. Okay. (laughs) So you, um, so you're shooting again, but for your OnlyFans platform only, correct? Yeah. Well, for my OnlyFans, for my loyal fans. um, But you're not shooting for brands anymore. No, I did like two quick girl, girl things. Not that long. Well, I guess it was a while ago now, but, um, one for Lust Cinema with Casey Calvert and one for because then Mile High was like, wait, she did something for Casey? Okay, we want her to do this. So I was like, fine. So I did another Girl Girl for uh, a Sweetheart movie and then that was it. And now Quasar, God love this little director of ours. He is now, um, he's thinks it's funny and so he keeps asking me to do all these non-sex roles for <laughs> and the one was I got shot in the face with all kinds of fake sperm to make it look like I accidentally got shot in the face after the sex scene with the girl and it's me just going ah! it comes hitting me in the okay, face wait, wait. So these are the things that are happening to me now break down to us how that happened like the behind the scenes like because obviously it's not a guy actually spraying you in the face with cum so like no because how did, the movie magic too many times there's not going to be and, and i and we all love Derek pierce but there's no way he's going to shoot like <laughs> over some girl's head and just hit me like repeatedly in the face m- multiple takes like that's not going to happen um 
But yeah, it was me like catching them together and then me army crawling under the bed and then me popping up going, what are you doing? And right on the cum shot, he goes, oh, and it just, <laughs> right? And just hits me in the face. <laughs> and I'm just screaming, oh my God, oh my God. I'm trying to wipe it off my neck. And yeah, so now this is, this is the new joy is to uh, make Julia the Easter egg in movies, right? Like, so now I'm coming in for these non-sex roles just for fun, just so that way. I think Mike just wants to have you on set. He just this wants you around. This is probably true, because he likes to have extra audience. Yeah, of course. Now, but how did, like, what was the substance that they used to shoot you in the face with? And what I th- tool did they use? I'm curious about this. Uh, he used a syringe. Like a big, it was Sean like, syringe, Alf. right? Okay. He made do it. Okay. Uh, Sean Alf, you had a syringe. <laughs> Poor Sean. He was just like this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And uh, I want to say it was the fake cum. Like I don't, the, it wasn't like pina colada mix or anything. Okay. If that got hit, if that hit me in the eye, we, I'd be angry. So it was probably Cetaphil or? It was not Cetaphil. Was it um, Spunk cause Lube? Cause I want to say it was something like that because okay. even Cetaphil, that, yeah, that, that could have got me. Yeah. And he, I didn't get got. So um, I think it was probably one of the this, this fake spunk things. But even if that got in your eye, that would still be painful. I mean, at least that feels face know. wash. Yeah. Then but, you can just go like this s- and then go to the sink and just splash water in your face it's afterwards. It's funny that you say that because sometimes <laughs> I, I always laugh at that when I was doing scenes and somebody would come all over me and then the cameraman would jump in and they would be like, wait. And then they would take Cetaphil and they would put more in your face so yeah. it looked fresher so they could take those last things. And yeah. I'm like, thank you. Because now it's got soap. I'm going to go wash my face. I mean, this to, is like a one stop shop here. To be honest, because usually guys' sperm is not that like thick and yeah. viscous, and there's not that much of it. You yeah. know what I mean? I it mean, it can like, be very clear, and it's too. Ha- yeah, exactly. Some are very can be hard clear. to capture on camera, so you so, need yeah. to add. So they would add that stuff just to make it look fresh again, and then yeah, I I just go oh, okay, sure, why not? Exactly. I feel um, like it's just like yeah. helping you. No, you know? but if I remember correctly, I think it was like spunk. It was like okay. one of those things, and then. And it just there's no behind the scenes of of this I feel you like would to have be. to well you know what he had a gif going he made a gif out of it because he is a jerk <laughs> and he thought it was the best thing ever and he probably it's i'm sure it's on his twitter all right I'll have and to ask uh yeah he just thought that was the most genius thing he'd ever shot <laughs> yeah that sounds like fun uh, the jerk <laughs> so no plans to shoot with any like big companies anytime no. soon, just because I know like people are going to ask me that. No, no, it, it's really irritating when people are like, "Oh, have you retired?" I'm like, I, I'm shooting all the time and I'm posting up stuff all the time. So I don't know how that even equates to saying retired. I I understand that I may not be working for the company you particularly like, mm-hmm. but that doesn't ever. Yeah fall into a definition of the word retire. Like, what are you doing? I feel like it's more along the lines of, are you not shooting anymore where I could see your stuff for free on a tube site? Right? I think that's that's what it translates to. Yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) That's sad for you. Sad for you. So luckily, there's so much free stuff, you really just don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, but if they want anything Mm -hmm. new, Mm -hmm. they got to go to you. You have to go to either... JulianLive.com or the OnlyFans or the Loyal Fans, something like that. Something like that. We yeah. will make sure that we plug all your plugs at the end, and then everyone can find it's you. It's all right. You y'all can find me. I'm, I'm just you're Googleable. Gabby. I'm Googleable. You're Googleable. So you've actually become like a bit of kind of like a den mother for like young women in the industry. I've seen this. Like you really like you know you seem to. You know, I, I, I've noticed that you've befriended a lot of, like, newer girls that come in the industry, and I feel like you're the kind of person who really wants to take care of them and, like, help them just navigate this career path. Is that – do you feel that that's right, or I do also, they gravitate towards you? I like, also just might be impatient. Mm. And so when I watch things start to happen, then I'm like, oh, my God, that cannot happen. Stop. <laughs> and then I just run in there. I go, do not do that here. <laughs> I can't watch the train wreck. No, I see the train coming. Stop it. Get off the tracks. (laughs) What do you see as like some of the biggest mistakes that new girls in the industry make? 
Oh, man. It is so complicated. I mean, I don't have a one answer. I feel like they don't know the job. They just don't have the information. They don't know the job. Yeah. And I, I guess it's not really anybody's uh, responsibility, any one person's responsibility to tell somebody, hey, maybe this isn't the job for you before mm -hmm. you do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, technically, that should be the agent's responsibility, but... but but too Doesn't many people come in way. and don't get an agent, and too yeah. many people are making content without ever coming into mainstream. Yeah. And so, again, whose response? I mean, there's no one person that can possibly tackle, or one organization that can possibly tackle all the people who have already done it by the time we know that they exist. Yeah. Right? Especially yeah. with the new content creators. Um, but I just. That does bring up a good question I wish they knew. that I was going to actually ask you too. So we've seen like some controversy around testing lately mm -hmm. because just like you said, like especially after the pandemic, the, the, all these new people that we call content creators. And I guess a content creator is somebody yeah. who starts off, they have like an OnlyFans or whatnot. They only shoot for that platform. Mm -hmm. They never shoot what we call mainstream porn, which is like shooting for browsers or shooting for, you know, mile high or, or what whatnot. So when you start shooting for those brands, you become kind of indoctrinated in the way that we, you know, do the way that we do porn, I guess. Right. You so you understand the testing. The legality, yeah. Some of the legalities. Exactly. Some and so as a content creator there, like you said, you're right. There's no like one organization that's overseeing everything. So right. um, can you kind of like for those who aren't aware, can you maybe explain like what we're dealing with in the moment in terms of like content creators? mainstream porn um, performers and like the testing issues that we're having? Um, well, the testing issues, I think are, they, they're gonna pan out, right? Mm -hmm. I, this is the reality. The realities are we have things, they come up, stuff shifts, we fix it, we go back to zero again until something else changes, whether it's technology changes or uh, something changes strains or, or like a disease becomes a different strain or whether something becomes antibiotic resistant we have to treat you know change how we it's treated or so as time goes on these things will reoccur because things will change and we'll have to revisit how we deal with stuff right. every time this is going to pan out the issues are for me is that too many people without a company standing in their way and say, no, we need this test, or no, we need this paperwork, or no, you can't shoot that. Um, no one knows why you need that, why the tests are so important uh, when they're not from that world. Even if they're in that world, they've, they've gotten, some of them have gotten really lax and they're like, oh, you know, but I trust them because they just have a husband. And then you're just like, mm -hmm. yeah, if it was a trust thing, then none of us would have testing at all. I'd be like, right. girl, I trust you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, it's all right. Your husband don't cheat. So <laughs> your girlfriend don't cheat. Your wife don't cheat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you've been, come on. We're all cheating. So, um, yeah, this this trust thing's not a thing. It's r utterly ridiculous. Yeah, and so that's the first thing. It there's people don't know it's not a trust thing. There is testing. It's not a cheap business to be in. Yeah, there is outgoing cost. There are out is there are outgoing costs in order to be in it. That's a reality, you know, uh, and it, there's a responsibility to be had that everybody should really participate in. Unfortunately, that's impossible. Yeah. Because we are so spread out and we are now no longer part of a collective. We are now individuals, a very individualistic community and everybody's doing their own thing from their own places and some of them have no knowledge of anything other than the fact that they saw that this sold somewhere. And they're just shooting it and putting it up. So that's a, I don't know how to reach everybody. Like, and obviously, you know, when you're the person that comes out and you're like, you guys can't do this. 
it'll be like, okay, Boomer, okay, Karen, okay, what? And I'm like, okay, so y'all can say that and I totally get it, right? Because I was 22 once. But at the end of the day, I know m more of why things are happening. So you don't have to agree with what, with, with the whys, but you have to know that the whys are there and there's a reason the whys are there. So if you're not supposed to be, oh God, I got to back that up. Let me try that again. I was on Twitter and I saw somebody post a clip of somebody pissing directly into their mouth. That's the best way to say this. Okay. And I looked at it and I went, holy shit, we're screwed. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody could be like, okay, boomer. Okay, this. Okay, that. No, no, no. I don't care if you want to cover yourself in shit and gasoline and set yourself on fire. Knock your socks off. I really don't care. For you. You do you. Mm -hmm. However, what you don't know is that freedom of speech does not pertain to everything that you can shoot. It does not. You can think it should. You can think that's not right. You can try to be a rebel about it. But at the end of the day, the government has decided before that things like that are worthy of taking you to court. Mm -hmm. And possibly making you a registered sex offender for obscenity. Right. So, do you know this? No, you probably don't. So if I'm going to tell you, you should not be shooting that. I'm not telling you because I give a crap of whether somebody pisses or shits in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But it's because you are unaware that individually you are bringing it down on the indust industry as a collective. Yeah, that's a really good point. And... I don't think you're doing it because you're selfish. I don't think you're doing it because you're a jerk. I don't think you're doing it because you're obstinate and you just want to be right. I think you're doing it because you, A, don't have the education to because nobody's told you, dude, that could really mess you up. Like, for real. Like, if they decided to come in here... The argument of everybody's driving 110 on the freeway. Why shouldn't I be doing it too? No, that's not going to be the argument. They're going to pick you out maybe, and you're going to be the fall guy that sets the standard for everybody else, right? Right. Um, so the everybody else is doing it is not going to be the excuse that gets you out. And even if they didn't put you in jail for it, even if you didn't register as a sex offender for it, they will financially crush you while you try to fight to get out of it. Yeah. And that's the purpose. The purpose isn't to jail us. The purpose is to crush us. Yeah. And also, too, I mean, you see with all these strict um, rules that MasterCard and Visa are now enforcing on content. Um, the best I mean, thing that could happen to us is that Twitter stops us. Mm. And that's my opinion. Okay. How do you mean by that? It's okay to be like, hey, you know what? I exist. Here's a pretty picture of me if you want to know more. You know, hey, you can always come to my adult site, right? Mm -hmm. And and then your adult site has protections. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Age verification. Age verification. One of the things that I read in the case of the U.S. versus Stagliano was that one of the things that they came down on him for, were trying to come down on him for, was providing obscene materials that were accessible to people under the age of 18. If that ain't Twitter, I don't know yeah. what to tell you. Yeah. Because you're posting it on an open forum that a nine-year-old can get on, and there's not even a paywall. There's not even a thing that says I'm over, as ridiculous as that little click that says I am over 18, the fact that that's not even a thing is ridiculous. There is the sensitive content warning, but, I, no, I hear you. And actually on my Twitter, I don't post anything more than like boobs. Like I won't post anything like explicit hey, because I just- you want to post a nude and I, you could argue it's art. You could argue yeah. it all day. But if you're going to post yourself getting railed and people sh coming on your face and people, your fist in your ass, not realizing that there's a reason 
ask yourself before you shoot it, is there a reason Brazzers doesn't shoot this? Is there a reason mm -hmm. that Wicked never shot this? Is there a reason Vivid never shot this? Is there a reason Mile High doesn't shoot this? Mm -hmm. It's not because they don't want the money. If they thought they could shoot all of this stuff, is there a reason Evil Angel's not shooting pissing scenes? Yeah, there's a reason. Ask yourself why. It's not because they don't like freedom of speech. It's not because they wouldn't shoot it if they could if they could sell it, they could sell it out the wazoo. Yeah. It's because history has taught and experience has told them that it's not, even though they won't tell you it's illegal, they're not going to tell you it's legal. And those are the guidelines that the big company stood with it. And the people need the education to know what risks you're taking when you shoot stuff that you believe should be fine to shoot. Because yeah. whether you feel it should be fine or not, is not going to be the reality of the world. There was actually, and I, I, I wish I could remember what the name was, but there was a specific lawyer who came up with a list of things, and this was like in the midst of all the obscenity cases Senate, what, that we were seeing. That was obscene, and you um, see it when you, you know, I can't it define Cambria? it. Oh, maybe, but you have to be careful defining it from what I, I believe, because if we actually find it ourselves no yeah he, they can he can probably perhaps have a list it was a list of like it wasn't and again it wasn't like these are illegal it was like no, this things is what you coming. should avoid right. to protect yourself against possible litigation yes yes and so that is a huge thing for me and the other problem is is that uh so the education surrounding obscenity and whether you think we should post it or not does not give you the right to post it i'm, right. I'm sorry and i'm not trying to be a jerk because at the end of the day again don't care what you do to yourself. Right. I really don't. I care so little. You have no idea. It almost makes me bad person. I care so little. <laughs> really. But what I care about is that one person or two people or three people mm -hmm. acting in a certain way can dismantle an entire community. Yeah. Because we're only as strong as our weakest link. Yeah. That's so true. And because, it, like you said, I mean, a collective is actually a good way to put it. But we're even not so much that anymore, no. as you mentioned. It's just a bunch of small businesses in a kind of self-regulating industry. And that and can get murky sometimes. And you've got a bunch of personal people out there going, you know, nobody can tell me what to do. I shoot my own stuff. And they're like, well, you guys should be covering our tests. I'm like, those two things don't go together. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> those th <laughs> you know, what? Like, no, it, uh, you just said you were, you're shooting your own stuff and your own business and now it's you. Like, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, there's a whole lot of this and that and the other thing thrown in and I'm like, none of this makes sense. Like, uh, yeah. so I mean, there's a shift basically because that's what's coming of all this and the shift could be ugly. You know, somebody told me they really believe that, that sex work would be decriminalized within 10 years. And I don't disagree with that. But if that's the case, I also think it's going to get criminalized harder first. I think the pendulum is on its way to swing. Mm. And I think we're probably going to get slapped in the face. And I think uh, people on Twitter posting their stuff need to be very, very careful. And uh, I think that you giving away all, you know, two minutes of you fisting your butt on Twitter is uh, not a good economic move. Uh, <laughs> you're basically giving away your own free stuff. And we all know uh, men only have to jerk off for like two minutes and yep. it's over. So you just gave them all the material. I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> they can do it on a single photo. You gave them three minutes. I don't yeah. know. We come from those days when guys <laughs> could masturbate photo. to just a photo. Victoria's Secret, bra and panty, not even nude. And you're yeah. like literally giving them like two minutes. <laughs> Your trailer doesn't have to be two minutes. Okay. So I don't really understand why you're giving them all the free stuff. Make them come there and then give them free stuff. Yeah. What I are you doing? <laughs> this is not even business savvy. Elon Musk would be like, what? <laughs> You're giving it all away. The, ultimately, that's why he wants to change the platform. It has all to do with economics, nothing to do with explicit material on a free platform. <laughs> he just thinks you're all are like really bad business people. Really bad business people. <laughs> like, so, oh my God. I remember, you know, our ads were like, there's a penis, there's her mouth. <laughs> we promise once you go in, more will happen between these two. <laughs> But you have to go in first. Now you're like, I swear, 
if you want to see the very last shot of sperm hit her face, you'll have to go in. <laughs> that, that little drip at the that end. That little drip at the end, you've got to go in. No, I am very concerned, though. I am concerned that people are unknowingly doing it. I don't, and at this point, you know, if you say something, then it becomes defiantly doing it. And, um, yeah. We're all going to be responsible. Every last person who posts things on there that go too far are going to be responsible yeah. when the whole thing happens. And then they're going to be mad. And they're going to be like, how dare the government do this? And I'm like, you do know that nothing you were doing was legal, right? Yeah. Like nothing you were doing was legal. Yeah. Scary. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Working in the adult industry, I deal with a lot of performance issues. I'm here to tell you that it happens to everyone. And even though you may be struggling with this, that doesn't mean that you can't be proactive about it. This is where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a discreet online service that delivers chewable tablets with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but at a fraction of the cost. How? Well, Blue Chew's tablets are created and shipped directly in the US, making it so much cheaper than a pharmacy. And though Blue Chew allows you to skip the doctor's office and the line at the pharmacy, they still work with licensed medical professionals who are committed to making sure that you get the right strength needed for your specific prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem. Blue Chew's Sildenafil and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. So if you're ready to start strong out of the gate and keep up with your partner, you need to give Blue Chew a try. Not convinced yet? Well, Blue Chew and I are prepared to give you a whole month's prescription for free. Just pay the $5 in shipping. But you need to use code HOLLY at checkout. That's bluechew.com. Use code HOLLY at checkout for your first month for free. Only pay $5 in shipping. So if you're not feeling confident in the bedroom right now, let's do something about it. Go to bluechew.com, use my code Holly for your first month for free. All right, guys, we are back. So, Julia, I know that you're married now, um, but before you met your husband, uh, how, was dating difficult for you? I knew this was going to be the question. I thought about it today. I was like, watch her be like, was it better dating in the industry or out of the industry? Okay, so I married in the industry also. Mm. Um, so I was married before. This is my second marriage. I, I, knew, I knew that. And uh, dating, as far as dating being difficult, no, I, but I'm not a dater. Like, I always tell people, like, I'm not a casual person, so you fuck with me, you stuck with me. Like, that's how that goes, right? Because I might like you, and then it's over. Like, uh, and if I spent more than two weeks with you, I like you, like you. Like, I, there's no, like, Oh, kind of, maybe. I don't know. We've been together for six months, yeah. but I'm not sure. I mean, I'm like, again, no, I got to go after six days. Direct and straight up. Yeah, you fuck with me. You stuck with me. There was a couple people I said it to in the industry, and they never went out with me again. Because, and I was perfectly happy. I understood that. Mm -hmm. And I even told them, I go, you never asked me about it. I did because because you said you fuck with me. You stuck with me. I go, that's valid. <laughs> that is valid. I, I respect that. Yeah. Because, yeah, you saw that. And... But yeah, you know, I don't want to be somebody be like, she's a stalker. I'd be like, I warned you. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm not a dater. Um, people have to like come on to me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, really? Okay. You want to go out one time? Well, all right. And then I do. So it's not like. I don't actively seek things. Mm -hmm. um, I've dated in the industry. I've dated out of the industry. I think the the problems are similar. However, um, the the bigger problems I had, I think, were in the industry, mm. and that's because there's a whole different level of us rotating around each other. So, you know, imagine being on set, and and I'm. I'm all gung ho about things, but imagine being on set and your significant other is somebody else in the business and they're doing their own things and whatever. And then you're hearing from people, you know, like, oh, I don't know, we hired him the other day. And they don't, may not even know you're together, but they're just like, yeah, he wasn't very solid and stuff like that. So now you're hearing them talk about like your significant other in these oh, ways. Because yeah. we are such a small group. Yeah. Of people. And you're like, oh, or. 
you're on set and you hear somebody else talking about, oh, yeah, he was on set with so-and-so and they were fucking in the bathroom and stuff like that in between takes. And you're like, oh, my God, like, what is happening? Like, so there's a lot of other things going on. Or somebody fought with somebody else or they don't like their overall attitudes. And they're like, I don't want you to work with so-and-so because yeah. I know what he's thinking when he's actually doing a scene with you. And I'm like, I don't care what he thinks when he's doing this. scene. He could be having sex with an entire circus of animals. As long as he's not actually having sex with an entire <laughs> circus of animals, I don't care what he's thinking. I just want to get through the scene, okay? Like, it's my job. I, I don't have to be flattered. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so the, all that inter fighting, all that inter, all the inter dynamics, or you you're gonna work with some girl and she doesn't know that you guys have a thing, and they're like, oh yeah, I love working with him. He's my favorite because da 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 da, and you're like, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things, that, uh, a lot of dynamics. I think you wouldn't think of when you're in it together. You know, and uh, I do remember one of them was like, you just want me to fail on set so that way people don't want to have sex with me. And I said, what are you talking about? My ego is completely wrapped up in the whether you can keep wood or not. Like, I am completely. <laughs> do you think I want to hear a single person be like, yeah, he's not a very good Like, No, you need to knock it out of the park so I can be proud of you. <laughs> this is a very much a good point. Yes. Do not embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have sex. You, you need to fuck her from right to left to top to bottom, from the window to the wall. But okay? not in between takes in the bathroom. You know, even if you did that, I just don't need somebody talking to me about it, not knowing we're a thing as if you and them are, an, are a thing. Yeah. Because now I'm like, you know, he's my boyfriend, right? Like, yeah. But I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to sit there and go, <laughs> He's in so much trouble. Oh my god! <laughs> Am I faking this? <laughs> I, I, I'm just lovingly stroking her, her jugular. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, uh, yeah. So your current husband yeah. is not in the industry. No. How did that go? Was it difficult? Like, how did he? Did he know you were in the industry before he started dating? Yes. Like, was that? He Ever knew who I was. He knew the whole thing. He was friends with a friend. So that yeah, that was not a thing. And even there was a couple times, I think, that it got under his skin. Uh, once, just because it had been so many years, he was like, oh, my God, I'm going to share you till I die. And then there was another time where it was like I did the one gang bang, and he was like, oh, did you have to have sex with seven guys at once? <laughs> you can correct me if I'm wrong because I don't remember how many guys were there. So in any case. But this happened before you guys dated, right? No, we were in the relationship. You were in the relationship. That's why he. When you did the game. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so he was like, oh, isn't that just kind of taking it a step too far? Like, um, but other than that, he'll say flat out, I, for whatever reason, he is not a jealous person. Mm -hmm. Like He's just not built that way. Yeah. Um, just doesn't it doesn't get to him yeah I know and people like find that to be so crazy but my dad was actually the same way like you know my parents my parents were swingers and my mom I swear would like try to make him jealous if she was like mad at him mm -hmm. and it just didn't work yeah and it's interesting because it's not that it's not that he's sad and puts up with it no he just didn't care he just doesn't care yeah yeah and my father was the same thing like he had enough I think confidence yeah that he was just like, of course you're not going to leave me for no. Jim Brown. You know and what I yeah. mean? Like I like I know you're not. Yeah, like, and that and that's the whole thing with him too is that he was just like, I think he was actually happy with the thought that, um, I understood to some degree that sex could be sex mm -hmm. without any other attachment to right. it. So even though we're not swingers. I, I think he had that mentality where it was like, not that he wanted to see me with people, but he just was like, as a as an 80s rocker dude who had sex with an insane amount of women, he was just like, it's just sex. I could bang somebody and never know their name. Do not care. So he, I think this just applied to this as well. Like yeah. I'm just having, you're just, it's work. Like who cares? Like it, it, he already had that in his head that sex didn't mean a connection. Yeah. 
I think a lot of people have a problem with that. That's why I find that, you know, my listeners are so fascinated with the idea of adult performers having relationships in and out of the industry because yeah. they're just like, how could I possibly – like they can't envision themselves well, being like to, with someone who like could have sex with someone else. They like to cut people like that, right? So instead of being like, "Yeah, oh, the guy literally just doesn't care," yeah. they're like, "Ah, oh, that poor guy's some sort of sad cuck." And I'm like, "If that's what it takes for you to feel better about the fact that you couldn't handle that, yeah. then okay, call that person names." But it also could just be the fact that that person just doesn't care. That's not their hook. Yeah, that's not the thing that hooks them. The thing that would hook them is if they saw me sitting with somebody maybe crying and them you know consoling me and being intimate in that like way maybe that emotional th- maybe that would be like uh huh you know you, you better be the gay best friend you know like i don't <laughs> yeah. know but but as far as just uh, an animalistic act that doesn't have any emotion to it i mean who knows that better than somebody who actually is that way yeah and i think he just is that way yeah yeah, and that's 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 rare. It's hard to find men like that. He just was like, like I said, there was a couple times it got under his craw. The one was the uh, the gangbang. I, that was understandable. I could understand because that's <laughs> overwhelming. That's not like, uh, yeah, I get you had sex with so and so today. I hope he's doing well. Yeah. Instead, it was just like, oh, there's a lot of guys there. So yeah, you know, it's like he's, one times six. Yeah, and he's like, okay. All and right, he was like, do just... we have to do that? And then I was like, yeah, I kind of do. And then he was like, uh, you know, the one time I had a problem, you couldn't just not do it. And that one caused us some grief. He had some shit to say. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame him. Uh, but again, as somebody who had compromised my world for relationships in the past, I just, even if this was going to person the rest of my life, I just don't think I was in a compromising place. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're in that place now? Yeah, but I don't know that at this point there's really any compromise. I think that he's who he is and I am who I am and we just let each other do our thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I sit back and be like, oh, I guess I can get over it and let him do that. Like, no, it's just not a thing. But you're doing, you're not doing boy-girl, right? You're just doing girl-girl for yourself? Yeah, no, I'm not doing boy-girl. Um but it's so funny because I did that on the heels of getting married. So everybody was like, oh, it's because she got married. No, no, no. Now, the fact that I got married, I used as a as a point mm-hmm. to move forward. Because mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? It's as good a time as any. Because then from our marriage forward, it's almost symbolistic. It'll just be us, right? Mm-hmm. But it really wasn't the reason because he never put that as a, as a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason why I stopped doing boy-girl was because as a woman who was getting older and one who hates the gym, I was finding that I couldn't control where my fat was going in a scene with guys. This is my vain reality and no bullshit. Um, When you have sex with a girl, when I have sex with a girl, I'm not going to say you, I can position myself, I can work it a certain way, I can be a little bit more, ooh, how you doing today? Yeah. But when a guy's behind you, it's just doink, 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 and stuff is just happening. <laughs> and I can feel it happening. And I'm like, this is not happening again, right? So I got to that point where I was like, I am so incredibly insecure at this point in my life that I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> That's where it was at. You know what? I 100% can relate to you on that. No. I was scared of what was happening. And I was like, I try to turn and then I'd be like, oh, there's an extra three wrinkles. Or God forbid, my face goes down. I feel my butt fat just go just a little bit. (laughs) And then he's going like this. So it's going, nope, 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 nope. Gotta go. Nope, gotta go. Yeah, I, you know, I can totally relate because... You know, especially like the more professional, like mm-hmm. the more seasoned guys, they'll move you around into whatever position you want, right? To open you up and right. and stuff. That's great when you're like thin and little and petite and like look good from every angle. But even like, if you're, even if you're a, a thicker girl, yeah. When you, when you're younger or you work out, let's just say, yeah. When you care, you, uh, you still your body firmly moves differently. Yeah. After menopause, your body moves 
separate from itself. <laughs> There's no one area that moves with the other area. Like you go this way, it goes that it's like a ricochet effect. <laughs> so it's uncool and none of you were going to be allowed to use it against me for the rest of my life. <laughs> and that's what happened cuz I don't trust all of you to be kind to me as I age. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God. See, this is what I love about you straight up. Like, this is, no bullshit. This is, it's true. I was like, it just had nothing to do with that man. It had all to do with y'all shit talking me. <laughs> Did it to yourself. That's what you get. That's what you get. Did you retire from shooting for browsers? Yeah, because of you. <laughs> Blame yourself. All right. I have a couple of um, various questions. And okay. then I do have some Patreon questions that I did have to ask you. Okay. Um, what is your greatest accomplishment in life? My 16-year-old chihuahua. Okay, I'll do better. But, oh, I mean, but, but the reality is, is that um, I rescued him at nine months old and he was extremely sick. And without steroids, almost his entire life and handmade food for his entire life, I have been able to keep that creature alive and drug-free. So I'm impressed. Anyhow, it's pretty much an accomplishment. Um, let me see, an accomplishment. I don't know. I would say perseverance, but the realities are is that I'm too lazy to go anywhere else. Uh, I would say, I mean, you know, honestly, my marriage is an insane accomplishment because it was not easy. Y'all get married. You made it through the gangbang. You oh, made it through the gangbang. <laughs> you all get married. You need to know that you're going to have to just throw whatever mental rule book you have out the window he and I fought and were in and out of that relationship for probably eight years Mm. one foot out the door at all times and then one day we decided that this behavior was no longer an option and then we decided to get married which should have shattered the whole thing into 50 million pieces, as we all know. That is not the way to go. And from the day we got married forward, our relationship has been the most solid relationship I've ever had in my life. So for whatever reason, marriage actually stopped our bullshit. And I have no idea how we defeated those particular odds because usually they're like it's the, the last thing you do is yeah. get married no i think our big problem was and i think he would agree with this is that he had previously been married for almost 19 years mm-hmm. and i think that he was in a position where he was like i really love this woman but god do i want to get do I, and i wasn't even pushing for marriage mm-hmm. but he was like do i there's a part of me that doesn't want to yield all of me. Mm -hmm. So there was always a part of him that was like, God, I want to be here. But part of me is like, am I going to give up freedom again? And that tango that he had with it caused us an insane amount of grief. Mm. And then the day I was like, you know what? You do you. I'm leaving, got to go, because I can't do this tango anymore. It's just too hot and cold. He came back with, you know what? I'm working on myself. I'll show you. This is what I want. This is what we're going to do. And I was like, okay. And then I we went to a therapist together. And the therapist said, so, and we weren't living together at that point. And the therapist was like, uh, what are you hoping, I mean, what are your goals? And he said, well, I'm going to want to marry her in a year. And I was like, this what? And he goes, you, you, you should have known that. I told Was you. Is that I, your proposal in the therapist's office? <laughs> he goes, I told you I wanted to take you to Hawaii, marry you. I go, well, you, you kind of said it one day in jest in front of Jenna asking her what she was doing around New Year's. I mean, but you didn't really, it like really wasn't a thing. Like, you just were like, hey, what are you doing at New Year's? Because I think, you know, I want to take her to Hawaii and get married. Jenna was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, you're so funny. And now he's like, yeah, I want to do this. And she was like, wow, does that make you happy? And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess. Like, and he goes, and then she goes, great, let's plan a wedding. And I was like, sure, what's happening? Like, 
And then <laughs> I left and I looked at him and I was like, we got to stop coming to her because inside of a month, I'm going to be in some sort of like fertility treatment. I don't know. Like, was just moving very quickly. And then it happened. And little Jenna Fox went and she was the best man, the bridesmaid, the cameraman, the music coordinator, <laughs> the hairdresser. The <laughs> and I believe that she could tackle all of those things. She did them all simultaneously. That's the best part. <laughs> simultaneously. She had a camera around with this. She had a speaker in her hand for oh my music. Oh, God, I love that. She, <laughs> she had the vows in her dress. Like, she was like a one-step shop. <laughs> it's awesome. That is amazing. I love that. I love that. What is your greatest fear? Poverty. Hmm. Reasonable. And not just poverty, but being homeless on the street with a psychological, uh, with some sort of a psychological issue, like which sadly we see a lot. Which sadly we city. see a lot. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I've said it since I was like a teenager. I mean, it's interesting because, like, you know, you're a teenager. You're, you're kind of rude and obnoxious as hell. And I, some things have changed to some degree with me. But um, I wouldn't necessarily do this. But when I would see, like, people walking down the street, like, screaming at themselves by themselves, mm -hmm. I would be like, that, that's going to be me someday. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be walking down the street and be like, fucking whore. Like, you know, and yeah. it's just going to be me. But as I get older, I realize that that joke that I was kind of making back then was really my fear. Yeah. Because now I look at it and I go, oh, no, that really does scare me. Like, that's what I would. And, and so I think that my making that real, my, that uh, connection to whatever that person's behavior was, was an, as an adult, I'm like, wow, no, I was actually tapping into that. Yeah. As a real fear. Yeah. Because who can help you when you're like that? Definitely, I don't, definitely I not don't our, know. I don't know how government. to help. No, and I don't know how to help that person. So yeah. what do we all do? We turn, all kind of go, oh, shit, I don't know what to do. And you go home. Like, you know, and am I going to be that person that's out there and everybody's like, it's like I'm invisible? I mean, the problem is, too, is dealing with mental health issues. Not only is it such like an intensive issue to treat that takes – you know, time and medication and sometimes like still doesn't work. Yeah. The person also has to be willing yes. to undergo all of those treatments and to actively work to get themselves on the other side of that. And some people just don't have that desire. No, they don't. And even if they did, it's an assumption that there's one, my nose is all snotty. There's an assumption that there's a one problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the realities are there could be multiple psycho psychological problems going on yeah. at the same time. Or maybe something that's not psychological, maybe it's physiological and it's tapping into the psychological. So even if you were to be like, this medication will help you, if there's something else in them that's like, I'm not taking that. But you now you're battling multiple things, you know? Yeah. And, and how do we do that, you know? Yeah, I know. So I, I think know. that it's that's so like a huge fear is just ending up being homeless and with a psychological disorder and invisible and dying on the street. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Sometimes people just say spiders. No. <laughs> spiders don't scare me at all. Spiders, snakes. If no, I don't think anybody who knows me would be like, oh, Julia's running from that living creature. I'd be like, ooh. Really I think cool. when I asked, you know what? I think when I asked Jenna Fox the same question, it was geckos. Geckos. <laughs> I told you she's scared of geckos. Yep. She's scared of geckos in a way that she stood in the middle of a room. We had a, we got a Airbnb. Was this when she slept in her car? Yes. Yeah. She stood in, but she stood in the middle of the room with her food, staring at the one gecko <laughs> that was on the ceiling. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's on the ceiling. I go, Charlie's in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jenna, we love you. You know, it's funny sitting, having just interviewed her a little while ago and sitting here with you, 
after you know some time you two have incredibly similar mannerisms and the way that you two speak and i feel like she must have picked it up from you i don't know or maybe you guys do you think you picked it up? maybe you guys just i think I, I, you guys speak in a very i like, definitely have some of her similar. things because I, you spend enough time with somebody like she lived yeah. with me yeah like we lived together, so I think you do sort of pick up on each other's stuff. But I also think we had to be a little similar in order to live together. Yeah, definitely, and still be so close, especially with some of the stuff that girl's done. <laughs> this is the girl that you'd be like, "Oh, I'm cold. Okay, why don't you use this quilt? My last found research to the depths of eBay." Pine Cone Hill Neiman Marcus quilt that there was only one left and I got a twin even though I had a king because I just had to have it. And she dyed her hair on it. <laughs> she dyed her hair on it. Oh my God. And then it went to the trash. Oh, no. And she was like, I didn't know. Oh, oh you she... wanted that back? <laughs> Do you have a shirt I can borrow? Yeah, here. Jenna, is that my shirt? Yeah. You cut it up. Oh, did you want it back? <laughs> I clearly, clearly, she's endearing enough for you to have forgiven her for these missteps. You are the child I never wanted. <laughs> this is what happened. And then she goes, "I'm not your child. I'm an adult. I'm your friend. You're not my mother." Jenna, what are you doing? Looking for batteries. Why are you in my house, in my cupboard, looking for batteries? Well, you know when you go shopping at your parents' house because you know they have things? Once again, not your parent. You may just you just told me this. I'm not your mother. <laughs> and now you're like, now you're, what do you do? Oh, you need a trash bag. Oh, and a Ziploc. That's my popcorn. Why are you pouring it into the Ziploc? <laughs> oh, my God. She really, you, she really is like a kid. Because you have more things than me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. We're going to wrap this up with a couple of questions from my Patreon members. Um, Dave says, I met you at Chicago in Chicago at Exotica pre-COVID. I was a little starstruck, but you made me feel like a million bucks. Thank you for the kindness that you showed me. I have been a fan since Blondage. What keeps you in the industry besides the money? I'm too lazy to go anywhere else. No. Um, it's it's what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. I'm comfortable here. Yeah. I, I, I have gone to college. I just got my um, bachelor's. Um, but I feel like, I don't know. I just, I got to a point, especially having the younger girls in the business and uh, my dealing with, you know, trying to help some of them, I've realized that I don't think I have the patience to do what I was going to do. Uh, I, I, I found myself almost screaming inside. Mm. And so um, I stopped that. But this is where I'm comfortable. Yeah. You know, this is where I'm happy. And nobody can say, what are you going to do when you get old and your looks fake because this won't last forever? Nah, dude, this lasts forever. <laughs> there's, there's a market for even after I'm dead. I'm not going there, but I'm just telling you this legit can last forever. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, I had a, oh, what was her name? Sexy Vanessa on who's 63. Yeah. And like, no signs of Gilf slowing down. Guilt porn is a thing. Yeah, she's, Guilt porn like, is a thing. And you know what? I mean, why why should you, you know, be unmarketable after a certain yeah, age? Yeah, you got plastic surgery, man. <laughs> Shoot. 70s and new 25. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, Michael Lee says, yeah. Hi, Julia. I've been a fan for two decades. My question is, did you enjoy doing your first gangbang? What was your first anal experience on camera like? My first anal experience is so unfortunate. I asked um i asked wicked if i could do a movie called julia ann hardcore and i wanted to do all these things i hadn't done before like a gang like i'm sorry not a gang like a like an anal like a two-way like a boy boy girl like all these things and I, I had not done and so it was for wicked so uh, it's a condom only thing Son of a bitch. so 
I asked Manuel Ferrara, and I'm not thinking. So they go and they get me, they put me on a, a circular mattress that's rotating. Oh my God. While he and I are trying to do my first anal with a condom, <laughs> which split my ass. So when all of you are like, y'all should be using condoms, yeah, that's that's what injured me. Yeah. Without the condom, Blue not a thing. Time. Yeah. But no amount of lube necessarily can combat the friction of a condom and the way it can pull. Yeah. And so when I went to do the boy boy girl, the next day I ran in there. Francois, one of our directors, will tell you flat out he was a cameraman on this, and it, what it's one of his highlights of his career because I <sighs> grabbed him. I go, Francois, come with me. It was the next day. And I took him into a bathroom, and I go, all right, you're my friend, so you have to tell me. And I just turned around, and I spread my ass cheek. I go, is my asshole split? <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, yes, it is. Oh, boy. Glad we're friends, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> were you going to work with that? I did. But you didn't do anal in that scene, right? I did. I used a lot of lube. And the guys were much smaller. It was uh, it was Tommy Gunn and Randy Spears, uh -huh. and we just took it gingerly. Oh god! Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was my choice. See, that's another thing. Um, I guess that kind of gets to me is that when I and I know not everybody has had my experiences, but I feel like myself and some of the people in my generation we were like oh, i know i totally broke a femur but just give me a minute i'm gonna take some advil and we'll finish the scene and then i'm gonna go to the hospital and nowadays i feel like the girl's like i broke a nail i gotta go home and you're like I'm i don't know what's happening <laughs> and i'm all for everybody having their boundaries girl like you can't do your day today you knock your socks off but I guess that part of me that really came from a roughing it yeah. thing, you yeah. know, like we're like, oh, no, I don't have a bathroom. I'm in the desert. It, it's anal. And here's your enema and a paper towel. Good luck. Have, here's a <laughs> shovel. Dig a hole, you know. And I was like, I could do this because I'm mm, strong. And you tell me, I'll tell you. And so I don't know, like. That's dedication to the craft for sure. But I, I mean, I broke a tailbone on stage and I continued to finish a week. There was a lot of flaming Dr. Peppers and some Vicodin. But I was like, I will get through this week and then I will go home and cry. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Like, my head quitting was not an option unless you, unless you actively sought out to hurt me on a set or scare yeah. me on a set or... Um, put me in a very dangerous position that I was not uh, that I was not suggesting because I suggested some shit I'm sorry. but if I didn't suggest it and you were putting me into something I wasn't comfortable with and then I was like no nah, I can't do that and you gave me shit I, that's different yeah but I don't know I mean, we could get, we could go on and on about kids these days and well, in my and day because I feel, I feel the same way. Obviously, not doing like I'm not splitting my asshole on set. No, but no, no. It's funny because I don't, I don't suggest anybody <laughs> do that. I'm just saying that there's, I feel like there's a huge change, and yeah. I don't know what the change exactly is. I'm not even saying it's a bad change, but I, but I do think there's a happy medium mm -hmm. where we can be stronger but not victims. Yeah. And I don't know that we found that. And I was watching a thing where they were talking about younger generations coping skills. Mm -hmm. And they were saying it, you know, it's not necessarily their fault. It's because there's too much access to telephones, like the social media. Yeah. And especially for women, I saw a guy, somebody speaking on this and it was amazing. They said women spend their entire, men don't do this. Men don't do this generally. Let me take this back. Straight men don't do this generally. Um, but women spend every day 
thinking that someone's judging them. And that was before social media. Mm -hmm. So everything that they did in their day, they felt like almost like they did it under the guise of if somebody was watching me, how would I look? Like, mm -hmm. am I, would I be being judged by society, by my neighbor, by my friend, from their parents, from the thing? And guys are just like, hey, bro, you know? But we actually spend more moments in our days actively being judged by an by an imaginary audience hmm. but now the audience is no longer imaginary. imaginary so now you have a bunch of young people young women and they are actually spending every moment of their life in the mindset of being judged yeah every moment and not imaginarily judged actually judged yeah like there's a real there's a tangible audience now that's terrifying yeah and no wonder coping is hard no wonder anxiety is through the roof no wonder the there's fragility um it's like i mean it's like something like in a a torture building, right? Like, but then couldn't there also be the argument of, okay, well, you're putting yourself out there to be judged, right? Like you're putting yourself on social media but to by get the, the likes time, or the dislikes. But or you're you talking that about like, 18 and over. Right. By the time you've gotten to a point where you can even actively recognize, think that yeah. before you've already spent 18 years, you spent your entire childhood now from the time someone handed you a phone to keep you from annoying them mm -hmm. you have spent a good portion of your teenage years no longer just thinking like you're being judged by the girl sitting next to you in class but somebody in hong kong mm -hmm. that's not reasonable yeah and it's that access it once you get to a certain age hopefully you you would have if you did if you hadn't been hit with it the entire time you might be stronger and more ready to then get hit with it because you have more confidence in yourself and it's yeah. an imaginary audience if anything but at this point you have been cut a little bit every day all day by a tangible audience till you even get to adulthood yeah Okay, well, uh, Violet, you're never getting on social media, <laughs> so sorry. You can blame Aunt Julia for that. You're you know never what? going on That's Twitter. That's all right. No way. My husband had a kid, has a kid, and when he was 14, he was like, hey, you better be happy that I'm your dad because she would have taken away all your shit. And I was like, it's true. You would have had a phone that called the police department, the fire department, you had a flip grandma, phone. and perhaps one phone of friends' parents. Yeah. <laughs> All right, two more questions. Uh, Danny says, uh, hi, Holly and Julia. What was the feedback like from the national commercials Julia did for Cougar Life? You know, I really didn't pay attention to it, but I did go on YouTube one time under world things it was playing, and people take such serious, as if I'm a real person behaving that way. Like, that's really me. And they were like, you know, that girl's awful. We should get her to do it. No, it was a script. I was asked to do it this way, but people were like, this woman's behavior is abhorrent. What's wrong with have, doing sweat, like folding sweaters for a living? I work in retail. And I was like, really? <laughs> Are you serious? Did you grow up with social media? Are you having coping problems? Like, it's not real, girl. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's not real. If it's on the internet, it's real. Trendy. Every time I shoved a sandwich in that girl's face and they said cut, I apologized and said, did I do it too hard? <laughs> Sorry about the mess. It's a man witch. You know, it's, I was, I, oh, that woman's just ugly and venomous. Look at the way she treats younger girls. Every day, every day, you can see what I do when you're not looking. Yeah. Like, it's crazy that they really go there. Yeah. But 
the best was the other people, especially people within the industry, were like, oh my God, I was in the airport and your commercial came on and it was the best thing ever. And I was like, I was so happy that I entertained my own friends so much. <laughs> and I feel like that was my, my role in life, to entertain the people around me. Yes. That's your tangible audience. I really like it. Okay, last question from Jacob. Uh, hi, you'll probably cover this during the interview, but how has the progression been from the young Julia Ann to the mature Julia Ann in the industry? Oh, you're so lucky we didn't cover that at all. Um, young Julia Ann, oh God, young Julia Ann said on film, if I'm still doing this when I'm 30, I'm a fucking loser. <laughs> Verbatim. And uh, I'd like you to know I'm 53, so I'm not a loser because I've done this much longer than that. That's what I meant when I said it. No. Okay. Um, no, I mean, this is here's the thing. This is why I know what it's like when other people speak that are in their 20s, because I've been them. I've been in the mindset. I've gone through that growth pattern. I know exactly what we see in the world and how we see other people, because I've seen what you see. Uh what you don't know is what I see because you have not been there yet. Um, I think the thing that's the most interesting is – all right, here we go. I, this is the best way I explain it. A girl wrote on Twitter the other day that she went to go see her gynecologist, and her gynecologist basically said, well, what you do for a living, you're probably going to get HIV. I saw and that. Thank I saw you. That. And I was like, girl, I would have rattled my doctor's cage, Right. And she was like, I hope that someday I can be like, I could, I can be secure like that enough to say something and stand up for myself. And I thought that's the difference between 22 year old Julia or 23 year old Julia. I didn't start until I was like 23, I think. 23 uh, year old Julia and 53 year old Julia, right? Yeah. And that's the progression. Yeah. The progression is being really secure in, in my things, even when they're wrong. Okay, <laughs> I know. But I can be very secure in my stance. And uh, uh, and I think that that's where the growth came in. And also, I, I stayed in the industry uh, for different reasons in different decades, right? Initially, you're like, I'm going to get into this business because I'm going to be more famous and I'll make more money uh, when I'm dancing. Okay. And then after a while, you're like, I'm in this business because I want to be more famous and I'm going to do more movies. And then, okay. And then you're like, I'm going to be in this business because, damn it, I'm this age. Nobody can tell me. I tell you I'm going to do all the things, right? You're like, bring it. I can handle everything, right? And then you get done with that. And then you're like, all right, I, I want to coast for a while. So I'm not do boys anymore and just do some girl, girl stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so there's just like there's these different things depending on where you are in your head. Yeah. You know, and and I think that the performance industry coming in, you know, if they stay long enough, that's what you're going to find out. You're going to find out that your reasons for being here, if this business is really for you, it's not for everybody who's here. But if this business is really for you, you're going to find that your brain says this decade this is who I am here, mm -hmm. you know? This is what I'm looking for, and this is what I have to offer. Yeah. You know, and, and as long as you stick true to that, you're probably going to be okay. If you try to follow somebody else's desires, you're probably going to implode. Yeah. It's all about the journey. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did offer to go to her doctor. I'll go to your doctor with oh, you. Oh, Jesus. Let me tell you what. I had one doctor, one gynecologist, and it wasn't even that long ago. It's been the last six years seven years and I she said what do you do and I told her and she was like so do you feel safe in your job she's very serious mm -hmm. and I said yes and I thought about it for a minute and I finally just looked at her and I go why did you ask me that question and she's like well no it's a thing like we're really supposed to ask if people feel safe you know, in their relationships to make sure you know they're okay because of domestic abuse I go you didn't ask me if I felt safe at home with my husband you asked me if I felt safe at work do you ask everybody if they feel safe at work? Yeah. And she was like, well, no. I said, you probably should check your biases before you speak. Yeah. That's it. And that she called me at home like within a couple of days and she was like, I want to call and apologize. And I said, you, you really need to rethink yourself. Damn. 
I mean, because that it, it was a bias. She yeah. didn't ask me if I was being abused at home. Yeah. She glossed right over the fact that my husband could have been kicking the crap out of me, and she went straight to the, my my business. Yeah. Are you asking the maid in the hotel? Do you feel safe being a maid in a hotel? I mean, do you? No. Yeah. You know you don't. Yeah. Check yourself. That's a good point. So. Julia Ann, bring in the fucking real shit. Sorry. I got to come in here someday and kumbaya. <laughs> you get it. No, you got to be yourself. That's, that's, that's the whole nice, message I am pretty nice, though. I just want y'all podcast. to know. Like, I care a lot, and I actually am you like. You do. But at the same time, yeah, I got opinions. You also. Yeah, you got opinions. You don't take no shit. I've been called polarized, polarizing more than once. <laughs> Well, Julia, we call you a Julia. wonderful guest. Oh, God. That, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was there. I had to take it. It's okay. Cheesy segue. But thank you so You're much welcome. for coming on. Um, always so good to see you. And um, I know everybody's so excited to have you back on the podcast. Well, Everybody loves you, hearing from you. Hope you enjoy it. Of course. You can see. Go back to my old interviews with people and you'll see like Julia going, I just loved the scene with so-and-so. Now I'm like, <laughs> y'all better get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Oh, well, you know, you can go to my Twitter at The Real Julia Ann. You can go to my website, which is The Real Julia Ann. No, sorry. It's Julia Ann Live or just Julia Ann. Um best thing you can do probably is google julia ann porn and my website will come up and it'll be fast you can figure shit out from there i do have an only fans the real julia ann i have a uh loyal fans which is just julia ann so no e on the end right it's not julian yes i'm sure you all find it because you're all smart (laughs) <laughs> and also because we put text in the video right oh. uh, underneath what you say. So as long as Ernie spells it right, it'll be it'll be correct on there. Ernie's like, ah, probably. <laughs> 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 and you guys, of course, can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Also with no E at the end. I have seen it spelled like that before. And if you want to watch these interviews live and support my podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next week.